right. Good evening, everyone. How, how is everyone doing tonight? We're good? All right. We have a fantastic crowd. This is a wonderful crowd here tonight. And we have an exciting night planned for you this evening. The committee has worked really, really hard to produce a fun night that gives you a chance to network a little bit, bid on a few items, let's start some bidding wars, and enjoy some wonderful food and decor and make some new friends. We're also here this evening to honor some of the unsung heroes serving the greater Woodbridge metro area. Our 2015 awardees come from all different walks of life. They represent various industries. And you're going to get to know them a little bit better tonight. They hail from the worlds of education, from banking, public service, recycling, small business, public safety, and utilities. Their leadership and service serve as an inspiration, and we'll get to hear their stories via video segments that will be played throughout the evening. I want to talk a little bit about tonight's silent auction. It is stocked with some great gifts, so we want to get some bidding wars going. I was also just handed a little note that the 50-50 so far is up to $680. So let's bring that total up a little higher, shall we? What we want to do now is go directly into the awards. We have a lot of awards to, to give out to some very deserving people this evening. So let's get that started. Our first award this evening is the Paul Harris Award for Community Service. And the Chamber is pleased to offer the Woodbridge Perth Amboy Rotary Club tonight's Chairman's Awards Dinner as a venue to recognize a deserving individual who has served their community through active involvement in humanitarian undertakings. This award recognizes service above self and is presented this year to Mary Howell. Mary, you can relax at your table and watch the video. Right now, we ask all of you to please sit back and enjoy this video as Mary shares the rewards of teaching and talks about a unique partnership that is inspiring students. Let's watch. My name is Mary Howell. I've been an educator for the last 18 years. I began my teaching career in Camden, New Jersey. I taught for seven years there um, because my focus in graduate school was on urban education reform. So I wanted to be in that environment. Um, I then moved to Perth Amboy and I spent the last 11 years teaching at the Edward J. Patton School, um, which is an elementary school in Perth Amboy. I taught first grade, but um, for one year and then the last 10 years fourth grade um, and what's beautiful about teaching for me is the ability to teach children about self-respect and mutual respect um, which really allows them to open themselves up to learning and being a real true member of a community it's not something that comes naturally to everyone but it is something that can be taught through example especially but through an ongoing effort to teach others to really see each other as viable human beings on this earth. My class was sponsored by the Woodbridge Perth Amboy Rotary Club for the past nine years. Um, in the past they had also sponsored a fourth grade class um, in my school and through their sponsorship they became what we called our Rotarian partners between my students and the Rotarians and each student would have their sort of pen pal partner who they would write to and share their best work with um, and get to know each other and the Rotarians in turn created a wonderful example of something to strive for for my students to be a professional to be a contributing member of their community in a really positive way and I think the students really flourished as a result of this partnership between the Rotarians and the students. Um, the students would finish off the year with a special luncheon for the Rotarians and they always wanted to put on some type of special production for the Rotarians. At times they sang songs, played instruments, did dances, wrote poetry and essays. Um, and one of the things that they did a couple of years ago is they researched 
what the Rotarians' role in society really is. And as they began to see that internationally, the role of Rotarians is to really try to eradicate polio across the globe, as well as trying to provide potable water for communities that don't have access to that. Um, and my students were really floored by this amazing activism that the Rotarians have. And I think it was very inspiring for them to have this example of how to truly help your fellow human beings. Um, so the students wrote a poem that they employed all of their ability to use symbolism and metaphors and all of their literary, literary devices in order to show a true appreciation for what, for what Rotarians truly do. I'd like to take this time to thank the Rotary Club and all the Rotarians individually for their continued support of me, the support of my students, the support of my school, and their support to all those in their community and beyond. I'd also like to thank my family for their support of me and everything I've done in my life, especially my husband, Dylan. I'd also like to thank my school, my colleagues, all of my past principals and current principal um, for all of their support during all of my educational endeavors. Let's hear it for Mary Howell. Mary, come on up and accept your award. Congratulations. Congratulations. Our next award this evening is the Business Education Partnership Champion. The Business Education Partnership Champion, this award honors an individual or a business that has created strong partnerships with our schools which have enhanced the learning experiences of our township students. We are delighted to honor Gary Sondermeyer of Bayshore Recycling. Is, is Gary in the room? Wave your hand. I just want to make sure we know where you are. There you are. Okay, there you are. Okay, Gary, very good. Um, in this video, Gary shares his passion for environmental education and the magical world of recycling. Let's take a look. I'm Gary Sundermeyer. I'm Vice President of Operations at Bayshore Recycling. And I'm in a second career opportunity. I did spend 30 years with the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, the last 10 of which I had the tremendous honor of serving as the chief of staff under the last six New Jersey governors and five DEP commissioners. Bayshore recycles just about everything. I like to refer to it as the Disneyland of recycling where all your recycling dreams come true. Our owners are very, very receptive to having kids in throughout the year and we have had the opportunity to talk to uh, very young kids, uh, Boy Scout troops, um, Brownie troops, grammar school kids, uh, kids from Woodbridge High School, Colonia High School, JFK High School, Chatham High School in Morris County, um, uh, different programs in the city of Newark that send high school kids here, as well as colleges and universities, Rutgers University, Rowan, Kane, and many others, Berkeley College. It's just uh, been wonderful to have an opportunity to speak to kids at all levels about the importance of environmental education and in particular about recycling and being able to show them how we actually do it here at Bayshore, which is essentially a recycling laboratory since we recycle everything from bottles and cans to uh, consumer electronics and houses, parking lots, roads, bridges, concrete, asphalt, brick and block, you name it, we recycle it here at Bayshore right in Woodbridge Township. 
I would very much like to, of course, first thank the Chamber for this wonderful honor. I am so touched by it. I've been engaged in environmental education for 35 years and to receive recognition like this is very, very special to me. I also have to thank our owners, Valerie and Frank Monte Calvo, who are very, very special people who started from the absolute ground up. Uh, Frank with his first truck and now operating the largest recycling facility in the state. And Valerie and Frank are both extremely supportive of environmental education, having groups here um, throughout the year, and letting me take time to go out to schools as well, which is just a wonderful opportunity. And finally, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Mayor John McCormick, Chief of Staff Carol Ehrlich, and Administrator Bob Landoffy, who we have a great relationship with and uh, have been very welcoming for whatever role Bayshore can play throughout the Woodbridge community. about the next award. The Carol Hyla Humanitarian Award is named after the former chamber president, Carol Hyla, who selflessly devoted countless hours to making her community stronger and still remains extremely active. I see Carol in the back of the room. Carol, please give a wave. Thank you, Carol. So this award, it's a special award that is presented to an organization or a person whose efforts positively impact the Woodbridge Township community. Receiving the award tonight is none other than Assemblyman Craig Coughlin on behalf of the Bowl for Hunger. All right, I invite you to watch so we're gonna learn how a chance personal experience he faced served as the catalyst for what has become a huge signature event that is uniting the community and improving lives. Let's take a look. Hi everyone, I'm Craig Coughlin and I'm humbled to be this year's Humanitarian of the Year. I hope you're all having a great time. Uh, Ball for Hunger got started uh, right after I uh, took office in 2010. Um, I wanted to do something that directly affected the, the people of the district. Uh, and I was taken by the fact when, uh, that I went to a food pantry opening in Perth Amboy. And the place was nice and shiny. And when I came out, uh, the building was wrapped uh, by people of, uh, of all shapes and sizes. Old people and young people, people of all different ethnic mixes. Uh, and it occurred to me that there was a real need for this. In, in talking to the folks from food pantries, I discovered that people who used to be donors were now recipients because the economy had become so tough. And so I sat down with Kathy McLaughlin and we came up with a plan. First thing we did was we reached out for some sponsors and, and I can't thank enough the folks uh, at Middlesex Water and at the Raritan Bay, first the foundation, now Raritan Bay Medical Center, Mike Dagnus and Dennis Tyles have Dennis Dahl have been great partners and uh, instantly signed on to be supportive. And then we moved on. Uh, the Chamber, Woodbridge Chamber, and I can't thank them enough for their involvement throughout this entire process, have been great supporters. And so we were off and running, uh, and we started off pretty modestly. First event raised, I think, about $9,000. It was one session uh, on a Sunday night uh, at the Woodbridge Bowling Alley, to whom I'm eternally grateful for, too. Uh, since then, it's taken on a life of its own. 
the event has continued to grow year after year. Uh, this year we had hundreds of bowlers and raised the most money we ever did, over $27,000. Uh, collectively, over the six years, we've been able to raise uh, nearly 125,000, about 121, I think, at the last count. Uh, for the folks who work in the, uh, in the food pantries, they do magic. They take that, that money and they make it something real and special and helps people. Uh, they, through the cooperative in Hills, Hillsborough, uh, they're able to buy food for 14 cents a pound. So that money that we've raised translates to nearly three quarters of a million pounds of food. And it was done by everyone, everyone who participates. Uh, we have some big corporate sponsors, but mostly um, it's people, regular people uh, who come and pay their uh, $20 to bowl, uh, people from church groups, people from the community, people who just want to make a difference. Uh, and they have fun, and I think that has been uh, the magic that has made this event really special. People who come, they come and they bowl. They have, they're good bowlers, they're bad bowlers, um, but they hang around with their friends, and they eat food, uh, and they laugh, uh, and so now we're up to two sessions and hundreds of bowlers, um, and it has uh, really taken on a life of its own. I'd like to thank, first and foremost, the people who volunteer at the food pantries. Uh, as I said, they really pour themselves into this, and they make a difference day to day in people's lives. I'd like to thank all the people who serve on the, on the committee. Uh, they work tirelessly. It's, you know, it's not unlike the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade or when Jerry Lewis used to have the telethon. The work begins the day after the last event ends. Uh, and because of them uh, and their success, uh, this event has really uh, become something that I'm remarkably proud of and incredibly humbled to be receiving an award for. Frankly, I'm not sure I deserve it. Others do. Uh, but I'll gladly accept it on their behalf and I thank them for all of their hard work. And thanks for coming. Now get back to having some fun. Congratulations to sending us great coffee to the Bowl for Hunger. Come on up. Oh, I'm gonna say a few words. Thank you, I'll take the picture. Thank you. All right, if you thought you were going to get away without me saying anything, you were wrong. Uh, first of all, uh, let me thank uh, the chamber. Yeah, I, I do have to confess, though. Somebody at the, you know, we, the first two awards were given out, and then they took a break, and somebody at the table suggested that they were reconsidering mine, so I was a little frightened. But thank God it all came out right. So let me thank the chamber for, for the wonderful work they do and for this amazing event. You know what? Everyone should be as fortunate as I am. Everyone should have a chance to be uh, so incredibly honored. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I've had that occasion on, on, on more than one occasion, or I've had that opportunity on more than one occasion. But this one's really special. I mean, this is really a big deal, I have to tell you. Um, this is a special organization, and this is a special event. And I'm particularly proud and fortunate to be receiving an award from Carol Hyla, who has been a, a dear friend for a very long time. So to get an award that bears her name is really special. And to Carol and John, who have done so much good work, I think they deserve a big round of applause. So thank you for that. Uh, I'd also like, I'd like to congratulate uh, the other honorees this evening. It's a, it is really a remarkable class. And I guess I've been around a while because well, I know them all. Uh, Gary and Joe, Greg and, and Anthony, whom I serve on the library board with, or he serves on the library board, I get paid to show up. Um, investors, who's uh, the biggest bank in New Jersey, and they're here, and, and Dennis, who was, was a partner from the beginning. Now, I didn't know Mary uh, very much, but I know her mom and dad, and I know the contribution that uh, they have made. So it's a wonderful group, and I'm privileged to be part of that. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my family, who showed up in big numbers, that's why everybody's yelling so loud, because I made them. Um, to my, my running mates who are with me, John and Joe, my friend Mayor McCormick is back there, 
uh, thank you all for being here this evening. And I have to confess, I did steal the idea a little bit, of, uh, not the bowl for hunger, but fr from Joe I learned uh, that you can make a difference beyond legislating. You know, Joe does backpacks for school kids. Uh, Joe raises money for Habitat for Humanity. And so uh, when I got elected, it, it was he I modeled uh, this notion after. And so uh, thank you for that, Joe. I hope you don't mind I, I stole the idea. I wanted to thank my committee. I, I, I wanna, they really do the work. I, I wasn't being falsely modest when I said in the video that others deserve the credit for that. Uh, Kathy McLaughlin, who moved on to South Carolina, uh, and whom I miss, uh, was, was the first person to get involved. But Karen Barnes and Bernadette and Peter Barcelona and Sarah Bannister uh, uh, all serve every time. Now, if you want to know how to get an award, you put people on the, from the Chamber of Commerce on. You may notice that Karen Barnes and Bernadette are on my committee, and I got an award. I, I don't know that that's a coincidence. Um, Summer DeFeo. Uh, and I'd like to thank my staff. Uh, Lori McCabe is here, and, and Crystal is here, and Rosanna, and Stephanie, uh, and a whole, whole lot of interns. And everybody pitched in and volunteered their time. Uh, and I'd really like to make a special thanks to Dan Harris. And most of you know him. Uh, no one works harder than Dan. Yeah, he's really. Um, he, he really poured himself in. When Kathy moved away, he took over, uh, and we had a remarkably successful event. So, let me make one last pitch. Uh, you know, there are any number of noble and worthy causes, but food instability is one that is pervasive, uh, that we face every day. Uh, the food instability rate in Middlesex County is a little over 10%. Put that in perspective. That means that about 10,000 people in Woodbridge face that challenge every day. And more than 22,000 in the 19th legislative district that I get to represent. And those numbers are higher if we talk about families with elderly people or families with children. About 900,000 people rely on food banks in the state of New Jersey every year. And it's a challenge that doesn't stop. Hunger never takes a holiday. It has to be done every year, every day of every year. And so, here's what you need to do. Make sure you clean your plate. And come bowling with us next summer. And in between, do what you can to support those food pantries. Your neighbors will thank you. Thank you all for this great honor. It's a great privilege to be here this evening. And just for a point of clarification, the recipients are selected by an awards committee which reviews nominations that are submitted from the chamber membership at large. So I just want to make that point very clear. So, um, but it's fan it was a fantastic event and uh, he's right, all of you should get involved in that. All right, so let's, let's move on to the next award, the Frank G. Pelsman Award. You know, many of us fondly remember Mayor Frank G. Pelsman, who was, who was really taken from us too soon. Uh, the Frank G. Pelsman Award is presented to a person or an organization that gives above and beyond what's expected. It honors true community spirit and is dedicated to Mayor Pelsman in tribute to his deep love of community. Receiving the award tonight is Anthony Terebitsky. All right, let's sit back and watch as Anthony talks about his public service and describes why volunteering brings its own personal reward. Let's watch. My name is Anthony Tarabetsky and we're here at the Port Reading Fire Department where I'm employed as a career firefighter for 13 years, since 2002. Started on my 16th birthday back in 1992, I joined the Avenel Colonial First Aid Squad. A couple years later, back in 1994, I followed in my dad's footsteps and joined the Avenel Fire Company and served there for eight years and parlayed that into the job I have today, being here in Port Reading as a firefighter. I also serve as the PTO president of Avenel Street School 4 and 5 and sit on the library board for the Township of Woodbridge as a board member. 
Well, taking on the position of president of the PTO, I'm out uh, a lot seeing a lot of the parents and the parking lots in the morning, and I encourage them to get involved with their children, uh, come to the meetings, um, come to our events that we have, socialize with us, and see what we do and be part of our membership. Uh, and I've also parlayed that with my daughter's softball team. A lot of the dads and the mom have joined and are a coach on the staff and help out any way they can. Uh, we're not always there. We all work, so whoever's there, we all pitch in, and we turn this into a really good group of uh, individuals to help us out, and the kids enjoy it, and we enjoy being there with them. Uh, one of the things I like about volunteering is the fact that the, the children that I'm involved in, especially with the softball and the PTO, they get real enjoyment out of it. Uh, our softball team enjoyed uh, every bit of the season that we had. Uh, the PTO parents uh, and the kids that we do things with, um, it, it's just fun to be part of something like that and part of the group to see as these kids move on and encourage them with the different events that they do. It, it's just a joy to see the enjoyment that they're having at these different events. Well, I'd like to first thank uh, Ron Franz, the executive director of the 200 Club of Middlesex County, for the nomination of this award. Um, I've known Ron uh, my entire life. Uh, he's part of the family, and um, I, again, I was very humbled when I when I heard about, it, especially being put in by him. Um, when I can, I help Ron with 200 Club needs. If there's anything I can do to help him, um, you know, I'm I'm very very honored to get it um, from his behalf. I would also like to thank the chamber and the committee for their uh, nomination and for their uh, thoughtfulness in thinking of me on this award. Um, I'm, again, very humbled and honored to, to be accepting it, and uh, it's a pleasure to work with the council, and thank you again so much for the honor. We know Anthony's dad very well. Let's give a shout out to him. There you go. But fantastic family, and we wish them all the best. Our next award. It's no secret in this room that business can be tough, and the challenges facing small businesses can be even tougher, but likewise tremendously rewarding. The Small Business Person of the Year recognizes an outstanding owner slash manager who has developed a successful small business that has been in operation for at least three years. The Chamber is honored to recognize Greg Aquila as the Small Business Person of the Year. watch in this video Greg describes how he got started in his field, the people who influenced him, and his philosophy on customer service. Good evening, I'm Greg Aquila. I'm the owner of Aquila Landscape Contractors. Aquila Landscape Contractors is a full-service landscape company. Um, we do um, sodding, we do seating, we do retaining walls, concrete work, uh, pavers, patios, walkways, drainage work. Um, you know, basically whatever you need for your home or business, uh, you know, we're there to provide a service. Um, I got into landscaping after uh, we sold a family printing business we had in New York for over 80 years um, and it was my brothers and I and uh, my father passed on and you know I always enjoyed working outside I you know my father was pretty fussy with his home um, and I just enjoy working outside it just wasn't for me to sit in an office all day uh, so we decided to sell the business and that's why in like 1983 uh, in April we started uh, Quilla Landscape Contractors and you know it, it's been very rewarding you know there were good times there were bad but you know you have to just go with the flow and just you know keep on chugging along my son likes what he does he's been with me over 10 years um, as a kid he would always like to come to work with me he catches on very easily um, and it just makes my life you know a lot easier i feel it's very important to give back to the community i grew up here my business is here um, you know, we've, we've donated to various organizations in town. Um, we've adopted, you know, three or four islands in town for the township. We landscape and we also maintain them. Um, 
you know, people have come to me for help, whether it's the schools, you know, or, or the Knights of Columbus in Woodbridge, um, and I do whatever I can. I think the, the biggest person that inspired me was my father. Um, he's the one who told me, don't make promises you can't keep. If you can't deliver something, admit it. Don't get yourself in trouble, and, and you're going to start losing customers. And he said this once when I was younger. He told me this once, and I always remembered it. Um, it's always better to make $100 10 times and have a customer call you back than to make $1,000 once and you never hear from them again. All right, I'd like to thank uh, the Woodbridge Chamber of Commerce. Uh, a lot of them I've known for years. Others, you know, I just met, but they're a great uh, bunch of people. Uh, I've been a member here for three years. Um, also, I'd like to thank my family. They were always there to back me. You know, um, they put up with me. They put up with the hours. Uh, they, my wife puts up with cooking dinner at eight, nine o'clock at night. Um, but I, I just have to, I just have to say that they have a lot of patience. Let's hear it for Greg up here. I have to say, the grass is always greener wherever Greg walks, right? But I'm bum, exactly. Um, all right, at this point, we'd like to call up Mayor McCormick. Here he goes. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the mayor. He is a great champion of the chamber and a friend to business. And as you may recall, the mayor was our citizen of the year last year. And uh, he reminded us last year, if many of you recall, through his hilarious blooper reel, that you can't take things too seriously. So let's please welcome Mayor McCormick. I'd like to say a few words. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here. I'd like to congratulate all the honorees. Congratulations to Mary, who I found out tonight is uh, Harry Pizicki's daughter. What was that like? Gary Sondermeyer, I mean, make your recycling dreams come true. Has anybody here ever had a recycling dream? <laughs> Craig Coughlin, who bowls for hunger. Shouldn't he bowl against hunger? Yeah, honey, let's go out and go bowl and some more people go hungry tonight. I mean, come on, Craig. But seriously, I've known Craig for longer than anybody else in this room. He's a great friend. Anthony Terabetsky, who represents the best firefighters and first aid squad members in the state of New Jersey here in Woodbridge Township. Congratulations, Anthony. <laughs> Greg Aquila, the official landscaper of Woodbridge Township. <laughs> Joe, I'm not sure why Joe's here, because without Amy, Joe would be nothing. <laughs> Kevin, I'm not sure why Kevin's here, because without Irene, Kevin would be nothing. <laughs> And Dennis Dahl, I mean, seriously? Without this young lady here, where the hell would you be? And speaking of where would you be without somebody else, my chief of staff, Carolyn Ehrlich. You already heard we have our great state senator, Joe Vitale, in the house. Assemblyman John Wisniewski. And of course, uh, our honoree, Craig Coughlin. I would like to just thank the Chamber for your consistent involvement in Woodbridge Township. We have such a good business environment here. Uh, we're pro-business. We want to make it as easy as possible for companies to come here, companies to stay here. And it's so important that we have a great partnership with the Chamber of Commerce. So thanks over the years to Carol Hyla, and thanks now to Karen Barnes and all the board of the Chamber for your partnership with us. And finally, thanks to all the honorees and all the people here for making Woodbridge the best town around. We are the best town around because of all of you. Thank you very much. The Member of the Year Award. Can we please keep it down so we can party like crazy after these are done? <laughs> all right, there are no words to describe our next honoree other than tenacious, goal-oriented, 
and yes, lovable. Lovable. The Member of the Year Award recognizes a member of the chamber that has offered truly exemplary service, totally, totally above and beyond the high standards set by the chamber. We are delighted to present the Member of the Year Award to, to Joe Manuel. Got a big fan of Marvin. So, so let's let let's calm down for a second. Let's watch and learn how the lessons he learned as a youngster can positively impact him for a lifetime. Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Joe Manuelli from Bank of Woodbridge, which is a division of BCB Community Bank. As a business development officer here in Woodbridge and in Staten Island, I'm responsible for all types of new business. When I arrived in Woodbridge in 2012, I did not know a soul, and I immediately went to meet Karen Barnes at the Woodbridge Chamber of Commerce and wanted to get involved on some sort of a committee and I was placed on the annual Chairman's Award Dinner Journal Ad Committee. As member of the year, I would encourage all of you to get involved with the Woodbridge Chamber of Commerce and join a committee. And believe me, you will be very, very happy you did. Growing up in life, my role, role model would have to be my grandmother. She uh, went through a very hard life, uh, lost her husband at a very young age of 33 years old, of whom I am named after. And she had just purchased a new home in Brooklyn, New York, and overcame the adversity and persevered. And just taught me a lot of uh, very, very important uh, things in life, especially when money was concerned, since she had a very, very tough go of it. At this time, I would like to thank the Bank of Woodbridge, BCB Community Bank, for the past nine years, giving me this opportunity to get out into the community and meet people. I would especially like to thank Thomas Conklin, our president, and our board of directors here at Bank of Woodbridge and BCB Community Bank. A special thanks to John Hogan, our past chairman of the board, and to our current chairman, Donna Rivera. And I would also like to add a special thank you to Karen Barnes, our president, and to Nancy Drum and Amy McDevitt. Joe's table after this event, that, that's for sure. And Amy is going to be leading the party, I think. There you go. Okay, our next award. You know, there are many corporations practicing active citizenship and working to create higher standards of living and quality of life in the communities in which they operate. And then there are some who take that responsibility to a whole new level. Tonight's honoree falls into that category. The Corporate Citizen of the Year Award recognizes a company for its many voluntary contributions and its philanthropy, 
while preserving profitability for its stakeholders. We are proud to honor Investors Bank as our Corporate Citizen of the Year. In this next video, you're going to hear from Kevin Cummings, President and CEO of Investors Bank, as he shares some of the bank's milestones and describes its commitment to corporate responsibility. Let's take a listen. Community is a big part of what Investors Bank stands for. We want to be the community bank headquartered here in New Jersey that puts the word community back into banking. We have our core values, and our core values are what we live by. Character, commitment, cooperation, and last but not least is community. Winston Churchill said, you make a living by what you get, you make a life by what you give back. And Investors is the bank that loves to give back. The major milestones that Investors has achieved over the past few years has been its growth, but more importantly, it has been its development of its culture. We believe that any bank can be successful. When you're successful, you grow, you make money, and things are good. But we strive to be more than successful. We strive to be significant. When you're significant, you create a legacy and a purpose. First and foremost, with your employees, because they're the ones that make a difference. We're the largest bank headquartered in New Jersey. We've grown from 5.8 billion in 2008 to over $20 billion today. But we have not forgotten our roots. It starts with helping our neighbors, helping the small businesses, and at the end of the day, making sure our employees are empowered to make a difference in the communities that they serve. Investors, by its very essence, is a community bank. It's very important for us to give back to the community. Corporations and large corporations do not have the feel for the community today. It's important we can't rely on government to do everything. It's our corporate responsibility to go out and make a difference in the community. It's a rallying cry for our employees. It's that significant substance of our company that gives us the competitive advantage. When we went public in 2005, we created the Investors Foundation with a $20 million contribution. And last year, when we did our second step IPO, we made another $20 million contribution. That's a $40 million contribution so that our employees can go out in the community and make a difference. It's time, treasure, and talent. Our employees supply the time and the talent, and we supply the funds to make them leaders in the community, leaders that serve and not self-serving leaders. Well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank all our employees for all the good things they do. I'd like to thank all our customers because with our employees and our customers together, they partner to make our communities better. I'd like to single out two or three individuals, though, that focus on this Middlesex market. Irene Conti, our Woodbridge branch manager, has been a tremendous influence in leading our initiatives here in Middlesex County. Jackie Pina, she works and runs the whole Middlesex region. We recently opened up two branches in Avenel and in Colonia and just moved, with continuing investments, moved our North Brunswick branch. These are two individuals that serve and make a difference in the communities. Irene and Jackie lead by example because they understand that people do what they see and not what they hear. I'm very thankful for their leadership and for all the good things they do in Middlesex County. Investors is so happy to be here in Woodbridge because it's the center of the state, it's the center of commerce here. We have a great opportunity here in Woodbridge, and we're here to serve you. Thank you for coming out tonight. God bless, and have a great evening. Thank you, gentlemen, and congratulations. Thank you for coming. Investors Bank.
you know, I have the opportunity to go to a lot of these events, and the chemistry and energy in this room is fantastic. So congratulations to all of you for supporting this great chamber. Bernadette, you did a great job tonight. Uh, Donna and Karen, congratulations to you. Leadership matters, and you guys are making a difference, so God bless you. And then my crew on table three. You know, John Wooden once was asked a question, the famous UCLA coach. He was asked, who's the best coach you ever coached against? And he said very candidly, the one with the best players. I have the best players, and that's what makes me look good. So have a great night, and I thank you all. And I really appreciate this award. Have a great evening. without seeing the Investors Bank logo. So we're very, very happy to have them in good vision for the long partnership the Chamber has with them. Okay, our final award this evening, and the dessert's not even out yet, so we're doing great. Our final award this evening is dedicated to William E. Short, who was the Chamber's very first chairman of the board. This is the most prestigious award given to individuals for distinguished service to the community at large. Tonight we honor this honoree's individual service, their vision and collaborative leadership that extends to local, state, and national levels. It gives the Chamber great pleasure to honor Dennis Stahl of Middlesex Water as its 2015 Citizen of the Year. All right, so let's sit back and let's hear Dennis describe his journey and the issues that he and ultimately even we may wind up wrestling with and also why making a difference matters. Let's listen. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dennis Dahl, President and CEO of Middlesex Water Company, and I'm grateful to be a part of this Chairman's Awards event this evening. And also, I'm very grateful to be in the company of so many individuals who make so many important contributions to the Woodbridge Township community. And, and I also have to say, uh, when I joined this industry coming out of public accounting many years ago, some of my friends said to me, what do you want to go into the water industry for? It's like watching grass grow. And I have to say, since I've been in this industry over all these years, it's never boring, it's always interesting, and it's certainly always challenging. One of the things that I truly love about this job is the diversity. We're a small enough company that I get to know our employees, I get to know many of the municipal officials and their employees, I get to play a role in delivering a, a very important service that serves a large population. But at the same time, we're also a large enough company that we're in multiple states, we're in multiple businesses, uh, we're traded on a national stock exchange. So I get the opportunity through a couple of national organizations to be involved in policy issues, legislative issues. Uh, so it's, it's always interesting. One example of that diversity is an operation we acquired in late 2014, uh, the water system at Dover Air Force Base in Dover, Delaware. It's one of the preeminent military facilities in the United States. It's the place where fallen soldiers come back to uh, when they're returned to the United States. Uh, it is a very humbling experience for us to be a part of that operation and to deliver water service and play a, a, a small part in the overall mission of the 5,000 people who support the, the base and all of its operations. One of the emerging, emerging challenges in many water systems across the country is the issue of aging infrastructure. Our company has always been very proactive in upgrading and replacing our water and wastewater infrastructure, but many systems around the country have not. I think it, the, the public is now becoming more aware and needs to become more aware of this emerging problem, not only how we're going to get all of these facilities upgraded, but how we're going to pay for them. Another emerging concern in the industry is the aging workforce. And that generation is now retiring in massive numbers. So replacing those skills is becoming more and more important. 
so that's a, a big challenge for the industry and something certainly we're focused on in our company and also in our industry. We always say that water is a local business and our company was founded in 1897 uh, along the Arthur Kill to support the industries and the populations that were living and working in that area during that time. Woodbridge Township has always been our home and it is the core of our, our service territory. So we feel we have a responsibility to do our part, not only because it's the right thing to do, uh, but because it is critically important to the success of our communities. And let's be honest, the success of our company is somewhat dependent upon the success of the communities we serve. And the people that came before us, they worked hard to make this area a better place to live and work, and we just believe that that's part of our responsibility as well. We're here in the lobby of our headquarters in Islin, and I'd first like to thank the Woodbridge Metro Chamber for all the good work they do and for honoring me with this award this evening. I'd also like to thank our employees for the fact that I look like I've accomplished anything at our company. It's all because of the good work that our employees do and the support that they provide to our communities. And certainly last but not least, I'd like to thank my family, my wife Barbara, my children Laura, Catherine and Ryan, who have supported me all these years in my career. They're all productive young adults in their own right and I'm very proud of them. And certainly I look forward to all the good things that we will do with the Chamber into the future. Our company has enjoyed a great partnership over a long period of time and there are a lot of good things that we intend to do together going forward as well. You know, as I chatted with a number of you during the cocktail hour and around dinner, I was reminded of how fortunate our company is to be working with so many people who are so passionate about the health and well-being of the Woodridge Township community. So I thank you all for all the contributions that all of you make in your own rights. I want to certainly thank the Chamber for this honor, Karen Barnes and the Board for all that you do, the great work that you do in this region. I want to thank my family who's here tonight, my wife Barbara, my children, my son-in-law, my future son-in-law, my assistant Jill Harrity, who keeps me uh, keeps me grounded on a day-to-day -day basis, and uh, and I'll tell you, Mayor McCormick was not wrong in his comments. Uh, Bernadette Solar is as much of the face of the company as I am, as I'm out and about, and all the contributions she makes. We have members of our management team here who make contributions to the, the well-being of the Woodbridge community every single day, and I want to thank them for their participation and their support. Uh, members of my board of directors, Jeff Shine is here tonight, Steve Klein from Northfield Bank is here, we thank you for your support as well, and my fellow board members from Raritan Bay Medical Center, several of you are out here today, and some of the management team. Great community, we're great to, very grateful to be a part of it, so thank you all very much for this honor. Thank you.